Okay, so this is the fourth video uh, at the beginning of the Unit 1 and 2 Methods course. I'm going to be looking at solving linear inequalities. This is the last of the linear algebra linear equations chapter. Um, the next video after this will move into the linear coordinate geometry, so distance, midpoint, sketching graphs, etc, etc. Um, this will just be a short one. So solving linear inequalities. So obviously the first thing is to make sure that we understand what these inequality symbols mean. Okay, People get a bit um, bogged down in whether the symbol is called greater than or less than. I wouldn't worry too much about that. Essentially the larger end, the open end, points to the bigger thing. So in this thing here it's saying that that thing is bigger than that thing because the bigger end points to the x or the small, and the smaller end points to the 3. Here, that thing is smaller than that thing because the, the small end points to the x. Okay, So, you know, is it a greater than symbol? It doesn't really matter what its name is. The, the small end points to the small thing, the big end points to the big thing. Greater than or equal to. x could either be bigger than 2, but it could also equal 2. Okay, x could either be smaller than 4, but it can also equal 4. Whereas here, x can't equal 3. It has to be something that is bigger than 3. Um, and then obviously we can combine those things together. So this says that x is somewhere between negative 1 and 5, not inclusive. So it has to be bigger than negative 1, but less, also less than 5. So somewhere between negative 1 and 5, but can't include negative 1 or 5. Whereas this one, x is somewhere between negative 4 and 2. Um, it can it be equal to 2, but it can't be equal to negative 4. So we're seeing over here on the right the graphical representations. So we represent um, the inclusiveness or not using a hollow circle. So let me just go back up to the top and then I'll come back down to these bottom ones. So when x is bigger than 3, x could be anything larger than 3. So we've got a number line for x, so essentially an x-axis. The blue line represents all the values that x could take. So it can take anything that's bigger than 3, but we've got a hollow circle here at 3 because it can't actually equal 3. Now some people think, oh, well, x being bigger than 3, that means x has to be bigger than or equal to 4. But what about all those numbers that are between 3 and 4? What about all these numbers in here? There's infinitely many numbers in there. So x being bigger than 3, the graphical representation still needs to start at 3 because 3.000000000001 is, is included. Okay, it's just the, at the number 3. So we represent the number 3 with a hollow circle, but everything straight after that is included. Um, so when we, let me jump back down to this one, when we say that f um, x is between negative 4 and 2, including 2 but not including negative 4, here's the number line that's going to be represented on. So we include the 2, but don't include the negative 4, and, but everything in between that's included. Okay. If x is less than 0 or bigger than 3, we've essentially got two separate branches. So um, x is less than, sorry, less than or equal to 0, so all these numbers down here, or x is bigger than 3, not including 3, so those values there. It's really important that you understand that this cannot be written as one interval like that can. You can't write x, uh, which way around would it go? That, that. Okay? Um, uh, have I done it right way around? Yes. Okay, so you can't you can't write it that way around, um, and yeah, it doesn't make sense to do so because if you actually look at what's happening here, if you were to put your hand over this section here, you're saying that zero is bigger than three. So as a single inequality. It doesn't make sense. It is two separate statements. Generally speaking, if you're going to write something, sorry, I've got space here. If you're going to write a number with an, and then an inequality sign and then x and then an inequality sign and then a number, the inequality should always be going in that direction. Whether they're less than or equal to's or less than's, they should always be going in that direction. And we should also always have the, sorry, should always have the. Sorry, I've written too close to the edge here and I'm in trouble. You should always have the smaller number first. Okay, It's like reading. We always read from left to right. Smallest to biggest. Okay, So if you're going to write one single inequality, you should always go from smallest to biggest. Okay, So we wouldn't write we wouldn't write 5 is bigger than x, which is bigger than negative 1. It's 
correct, but it's not as nice. It does, it's not as logical to read either. So from smallest, smaller number to larger number with the x in the middle, the inequality should always be going this way. Okay. If they, if you get one this way and one this way, then it's not one inequality. It should be written as two separate things. Or if you get a statement like what we showed here, which essentially says that the bigger number is smaller than the smaller number, um, then something's not right either. Okay, so linear inequalities are solved in exactly the same way as linear equations, except that the inequality sign is reversed if both sides of the inequality are multiplied or divided by a negative value. That's the only time. And this is again where it's important that you understand what you're doing when you're solving equations. You're not just moving things from side to side, you are doing a mathematical operation to both sides. Okay, and if that mathematical operation is multiplication or division, and if the number that you are multiplying or dividing by is negative, then you need to reverse the inequality sign. We can let's just pause and have a think about why that's true. So let's have a number line. Let's have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, that was 5 there, negative 5. Okay, let's say... I've got, I'm at here at 2, x equals 2, okay? Now let's just pick two things. So 2, actually let me do two simpler things. Yeah, let's say 2 and 5, okay? So those two numbers. We all agree that 5 is bigger than 2, okay? Generally if something is greater than, it's further to the right on the number line, okay? Now if I were to add 1 to both sides of that inequality, I get 3 is less than 6. Still true. If you were to add 12 to both sides of the inequality, it becomes 14 is less than 17. Still true. Whatever you add to both sides is not going to change the fact that the thing on the right is bigger than the thing on the left. Same is true of subtraction. If I were to subtract 3 from both sides here, negative 1 is less than 2. That's true. If I were to subtract 10 from both sides here, negative 8 is less than negative 5. That's true. Okay. So adding or subtracting to both sides of the inequality doesn't change the inequality. It's still true. However, oh sorry, we can also multiply. So if we doubled both sides of that inequality, 4 is less than 10. That's still true. Okay. So on the number line, when we're adding or subtracting, all we're doing is shifting both these things along. And the thing on the right is still bigger than the thing on the left. If we multiply by 2, we're going to double everything. That goes to there and that's going to go off the scale to 10. But the thing on the right is still bigger than the thing on the left. If we were to halve everything, so divide by 2, it's going to go back to 1, that's going to go back to 2.5, but the thing on the right will still be bigger than the thing on the left. If we multiply both sides by negative 1, multiplying that by negative 1, it becomes negative 2, multiplying that by negative 1, it becomes negative 5. And now all of a sudden, the thing that was on the right, the bigger thing, is now on the left. It's now the smaller thing. So that's why when we multiply by a negative, we need to reverse the sign. Because essentially what you do when you multiply by a negative is you mirror the situation in the line in the in the line x equals zero. Okay? And so therefore what's what was on the right goes on the left and what was on the left goes on the right. So we have to flip the inequality around. Okay, so that's all we need to remember. Otherwise we just treat it like we would any equation. Um, so focus on how you're going to solve it. Now you might do one of two things here. You might choose to expand out the brackets on the left. I'm looking at part A. Um, and then solve from there. Or you might choose to divide by negative 2, which maybe would, given that 2 goes into 4 on the right-hand side, that's probably a good strategy. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2 first. Leaves me with 3x plus 1 here. Leaves me with, uh, it's, I'm dividing by negative 2, so I'm going to reverse the sign. And 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2. Now I'm going to take away 1. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 3, which is not dividing by a negative, so that's okay. So even though there is a negative here, you're not dividing by negative 3 at this step. You are dividing both sides by positive 3. Okay? And so no need to reverse the sign. The sign gets reversed at that moment there. And from then on it doesn't change. Okay, part B. It's an equation involving fractions. Okay, it's an inequality, but it involves fractions. So let's deal with those first. Let's focus on that common denominator. The lowest common denominator here is going to be 4. Okay, so we've multiplied the denominator of the first fraction by 2, so we'll double the numerator as well. 
we haven't done anything to the second fraction. The denominator on the right hand side was 1. 6 over 1 becomes 24 over 4. Now we can get rid of the fractions and this is where it's important that you understand what you're doing. When we get rid of the fractions we're multiplying both sides by 4. We're multiplying by positive 4 so no need to reverse the sign. So it's going to be 6 minus, ah, now careful here, this is where you'll make a mistake. It's 6 minus all of that, bigger than 24. Alright, so 6 minus x plus 3 is bigger than 24. Um, so that is 9 minus x is bigger than 24. Take away 9 from both sides. This negative x is bigger than, uh, sorry, not negative, uh, 15. And then multiplying both sides by negative 1 or dividing both sides by negative 1, x is, we're going to need to reverse that sign, less than 15. I'm sorry, negative 15. The other thing you might have chosen to do at this point, your alternative pathway from here would be to add x. So 9 is less than 24 plus x. So you've added x to both sides, no need to reverse the sign. Then take away 24, negative 15 is bigger than x. Now, I have an issue with this. I don't think that's enough to stop at that point. The question's asked you to solve for x. If you want to know about x, I don't. the answer to that isn't negative 15 is bigger than x. The answer is x is less than negative 15. Okay, so you need to make that connection yourself and you need to be able to rewrite this the right way around. The other thing is that lots of students make mistakes when they rewrite this the other way around. And so it's not up to me as the person marking your work to, to do it for you, it's up to you to be able to do it. So I reversed the sign here, but I didn't reverse the inequality because all I did was write the whole thing backwards the small end is still pointing to the x, okay? So I didn't actually flip it because I multiplied by a negative or anything. I just wrote the thing in the opposite order, which meant when I wrote it in the opposite order, flipping the sign around, okay? So the smaller end has to still stay pointing at the x, but you should always write the x first. If you're solving for x, x equals is your answer. x is bigger than is your answer. x is less than is your answer. Not, you know, it, it's a bit like if I asked you, you know, what colour is the, is the sky blue, you, you saying, oh no, if I asked you what colour is the sky, you saying it's not green. It's sort of, it's true, but it's not, not exactly answering the question, okay? That's a slightly not correct analogy, but um, you know what I mean. Okay, exercise 1E for some practice. I imagine that some of you don't need too much practice there. You might still be spending some more time working on the worded problems um, which is probably a bigger area of practice, but all the same, a little a little bit of practice for each. Again, I've listed a, a selection of questions there. By all means, do some more of the things you find hard. Um, you could cut down a bit more, cut down and do a few less of the things you find easy.